Hey everyone, welcome to my live stream today. Uh, today we're going to be working on kind of building what we built on last week with uh, kind of like customer um, data or transactional data. So to recap from what we did last week, we kind of already had data preceded where we had kind of customer activity, purchases, promo codes, products, and um, you know transactions that customers did. Um, and usually it's hard to find data, that kind of data on like Kaggle and stuff that you can be able to join and do certain things with. And so I kind of just kind of created some fake data to show you how you can use, you know, both DynamoDB and um, today we're going to be working on streaming data with Kinesis and join, um, join um, collections and do aggregations and stuff on Rockset and then be able to visualize, you know, what's going on with your promotional thing that you're running, let's say you have an e-commerce company and you're running a promotional thing where you're selling capri pants and a shirt and you wanna see what customers are buying, whether they're buying both items together in bundle, you wanna see new customer signups who are using promo codes and things like that. And so I uh, kind of, um, we're working with that kind of data and we're trying to build, you know, basically internal tools with Retool to kind of visualize what's going on with um, a campaign that, a com that an e-commerce company um, can run. So what we did last week is we kind of worked with DynamoDB. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up and just recap what we did last week. So if I put DynamoDB, um, we're gonna go over the tables. Uh, yeah, tables in DynamoDB. Let's go ahead and look over here. So we have a couple, well, there's a lot of tables here, but the ones I want to point out is that we have a customer table for customer information. We have a customer activity. Basically, this describes what they're clicking on, whether they add it to their shopping cart, things like that. Um, we have an order item um, table, which is like transactions I've gone through. We have a product table, which gives like a product description, um, product ID, things like that. And then finally, we have a promo table, which has a promo code, whether it's good for multiple uses or one use, promo ID, things like that. So um, this is, I think I can click on one of this and I can kind of go over, let's see. It's kind of loading right now. If we go to view items, let's see. Yeah, you can kind of see what's going on here. Let's go back to tables. So yeah, this is like what we have. These are all like the information. And I just uploaded data once into um, DynamoDB um, and such. And so we use a script basically. So we created the tables on DynamoDB. We use a Python script to upload the data, um, a JSON, basically, basically a JSON file, <coughs> sorry, to um, DynamoDB. And then um, what we did is we did an integration on Rockset to get the data. So eventually we can do joins, aggregations, and search. Well, actually I'm already on the console over here um, with the data. So if I go over here, hopefully I do have it here. If I search customer, um, oh, I'm on query Lambda. Let's go to customer really quick. There we go. Um, uh, let's see, we have customer, did I, when did I do this? There's so many collections that I have, July 7th. That was yesterday. What was last week? Well, one of these are, I think this is it actually. Yeah, 14 days ago. Um, we have what we have, yeah, this is right. This is actually 14 days ago. We have all the data that we created, for example, the customer information. So we have customer city, customer email, customer ID, customer name, customer um, region. And this is kind of what the data looks like. So we kind of got the data into Rockset, and then from there we can, uh, what we're gonna work today is doing joins, aggregations, and search um, with that data. Now the one thing that I did last week is I, I, I uploaded to the DynamoDB table customer activity, and I was just a JSON file to get it going um, and to kind of show the end-to-end -end result of you know going from you know sending your data to DynamoDB to using Rock, Rockset as an index, uh, real-time indexing layer to do joins, aggregations, and search. And then from there, taking the API and plugging it into Retool so we can visualize the data uh, 
visualize what's going on. So if I pull up the retool and I sign in really quickly, I'm gonna show you what we kind of worked on last week. Um, now, typically when you're working with like streaming data, like you don't, you wouldn't use DynamoDB, you would use Kinesis or Kafka. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna, um, we're gonna, uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna actually upload, we're gonna work with Kinesis today. And I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna show you how to work with Kinesis and upload data to Kinesis and kind of get the permissions and stuff going. And then from there, we're gonna send, we're gonna do an integration with Rockset from Kinesis so we can get the streaming data into Rockset. And then we can use um, DynamoDB and Kinesis data and write some queries that we can eventually visualize in Retool. So if I pull up what we worked on um, on Retool two weeks ago, let's hit edit app. Uh, let's go ahead and run this really quick. We kind of, I just had enough time to kind of show you an end to end example of, you know, what this kind of looks like and how to get this going. So what we did is we got the, we created a query Lambda on Rockset. Um, and then we did a post request. I kind of put the key, the headers in and stuff, and then I just ran the query. And then what I did over here is I just got the kind of just like the query name, I guess, from Retool and just got the results of the data and it just automatically displays it on a table. Now, Retool has an option to kind of continuously update the dashboard or the, the visualization tool, I guess. So you instead of hitting run query only when manually triggered, you can run query when inputs changes and you can have a like a refresh, like a like a little slider bar, I guess, and you can constantly refresh your um, you refresh your, your dashboard so it's constantly updating, you know, X amount of seconds or X amount of minutes or whatever, you know, the time length that you kind of want to update. So this is kind of what we worked on two weeks ago. Oof, I said last week, two weeks ago. Um, time flies. And so let's go ahead and get started with Kinesis so we can send data to, can, can send our customer activity to, um, to Kinesis as a stream. And then from there, we'll do an integration on Rockset. So that's the only thing that we're gonna do, and then we're gonna work on some queries today on Rockset, where we're gonna join from the different sources from DynamoDB and Kinesis, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some kind of um, components onto our little, I guess, um, visualization tool here, um, and then start uh, putting some stuff together. So if you are running a campaign with an e-commerce example, you can kind of see in real time, or near real time, I guess, what's going on. So. Let's go ahead and get started. So I, um, I sh we have an we have all our stuff over here, and we are what we're gonna do instead of putting customer activity in DynamoDB, we're gonna add it to Kinesis because that's typically what you would do. So what I need to do now to get started to get customer activity into Kinesis, since it's streaming, assuming it's gonna be streaming data when you are working with an e-commerce stuff, for example, we're gonna actually go ahead and create um, a data stream. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a data stream and I'm just gonna call it customer activity and I'll put Twitch here. And um, for the values, we can just hit 10, which is fine because it's gonna be static data anyway. So it wouldn't really, you know, for our purposes, it doesn't, the number of shards is, doesn't really matter, but you can change that as your app, data application um, demands it. So. I'm gonna go ahead and create a, uh, a go ahead and create a data stream on Kinesis, and it takes a few minutes. So I'm gonna open up a separate doc so I can keep track of all the names and stuff that I'm kind of working with at the moment. Um, so one second while I get that going. Let's see. All right, so I'm just gonna put this in the top over here. Okay, so now um, now that we kind of have our data stream, we have to kind of work on uh, getting permissions to it, or using the IAM policy to give certain permissions so we can actually push data into Kinesis Stream for like a put records and things like that. So there is, there is a, I'm trying to see if there's a doc. There is some doc I came across that kind of helps you go through this. I think I found it. Hold on, I'm gonna pull it up over here. So if you're like not sure how to how to do this, I did find this doc on AWS and this is actually kind of how I figured it out. Um, I'll share this doc here, I think this is it. Uh, create a data stream, yeah. So this is tells you kind of how to work with Amazon Kinesis data stream. 
and it's actually pretty good. Um, the instructions are actually pretty good for 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 this, and it's pretty clear what you need to do. So once you create a, I'm gonna add this doc to our switch stream over here, so we can have that back there. And so now that we create a Kinesis stream, the next steps is that we need to create an IAM policy and user. So I'm just gonna kind of follow the instructions on the docs really quick. Um, basically what we need to make sure that we have is we're able to send data to uh, Kinesis. Because if we don't, then there's gonna be some exceptions that says you, don't, you can't send data to it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. So if I put in, um, let's put this over here at the end, and then I get rid of this tab bar over here. So if I go to this, one second, I'm gonna put in IAM, and we're gonna create a policy. I really like Google's search bar. Like anytime I need to navigate to certain products within our, um, sorry, AWS's search bar. Anytime I need to navigate to like certain products within AWS, it's really easy to use the search bar. I really do like that. Um, otherwise it'll be a nightmare fishing through everything because there's so many products on AWS. Um, so if I go to policies and we can go ahead and create a policy. There we go. So if I remember correctly, let's go back to the docs really quick. You can create a policy. Um, it says locate Amazon ARN for the new data stream that you created in the step above. You can find the ARN list in stream AM details. Let's see. Um, yeah, actually, let me. I'm going to open up a separate bar too, so I can make sure I have. Uh, actually, let's have another tab so I have the uh, Kinesis data available too. So I'm just gonna type in Kinesis back here again because I'm, I'm gonna need the ARN um, for Kinesis. Yeah, working with AWS, you do need to have multiple tabs open. Um, that's for sure. All right, so let's go, this is the one we just created. So I might need this ARN later. So now let's go back to IAM and I'm gonna do choose service. And I think we can do Kinesis. So we can click that. And now we have to give it some sort of leveled um, access level. And so I think there's certain ones that we can give. So I'm gonna move back to here. So yeah, so you, um, you select your policy and then you need to give it these uh, describe streams, get shard iterator, get records, put records, and put records, plural. So these are the four that we need to put in. And if you, obviously, if your data application, if you, your data application needs more, you can always set more for the permissions. But I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. So we're going to do read. So was it describe stream, get records, get shard iterator, and I think the right was put record and put record. So we need those two for sure. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five. Let's look back in the docs. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, three and five. Okay, cool. This looks good. So then from here, um, we have our resource. Um, and then we can add, uh, specify stream resource area to get the records with four more actions. So I guess we can add, add ARN. So now this is when we go back to our little Kinesis stream over here. And I'm just gonna copy the ARN. Actually, I can just hit this copy button. And I can just, yeah, I can just put that there. And it auto-populates automatically um, what these values are, which is awesome. So then I'm going to go ahead and add this. And then specify request conditions. I don't think I need to do that. Yeah, I think we're okay on that. Um, cool. So let's go back to these docs really quickly. Um, all that is pretty set. I'm not really worried about the DynamoDB stuff or um, CloudWatch. So... We can kind of skip all of that. Um, choose next steps and then change policy. Okay, so now I'm just gonna create our policy. So this is, I guess they're just walking you through a sample tutorial here, but you can kind of lift this tutorial to figure out like how to get your stuff going. So I think this is okay. I don't need to add any other permissions and stuff. And if we look at the JSON, it should automatically be populated with the right actions and resources and stuff. So this looks pretty good too. I'll, outside of that, if you already know what the JSON is supposed to look like, you can just copy and paste it and probably add it here, and it should be fine as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. Uh, yes, 
I think we can just move next to the next steps. Should be fine. So I'm going to hit next steps. Um, we don't need tags. We can review this. So I'm going to call this um, policies. Uh, I don't know. We'll say um, actually customer activity. Yeah, I'm going to delete all this. Okay. Customer activity Twitch um, policy. Um, and I'll just put 07. Oh, eight. I have like so many of these right now. Like I'm starting to add dates to them so I don't lose track of it. And I'm just going to copy this really quick to a doc so I I can keep track of what we're doing here. Um, so I'm policy. I'm just writing this in a doc really quick for put records. Okay. Okay, cool. So then I'm just going to write... Um, Customer activity Twitch policy, um, policy that allows our data application to write to Kinesis, to write data to Kinesis. There we go. Perfect. And then we have our service. We don't need tags, and we can just go ahead and create the policy. Oh, they don't like this. I keep forgetting. All right, this looks good. So create policy. All right. So, so far, so good. Um, all right. Let's go ahead. I'm just looking for my, uh, my notes really quick for keeping notes on what we're creating today. Um, cool. Um, so now that we, we kind of have everything um, going on, if we go back to the docs, we already wrote that. Um, now we need to create uh, we need to create a user for this. So I'm gonna just pull this. I, I like how AWS just pulls the next tab. We already know you need tabs on tabs on here. Okay, so now we need to create a user group is what they say. For a user, so we're gonna create, um, you can create a username or if you have one, I guess you can just add the policy to your user that you've created. So if I look at users, um, we already have users over here and I already have before um, a customer activity stream user that I created a while ago. So um, let's go ahead and see if we can um, I don't want to create like once you create a new user, you have to you'll you'll have to generate your access key and your secret key and do all that. Okay, am I supposed to be seeing anything? <gasps> oh my goodness! Oh, thanks for that. I forgot. Oh my gosh. Good catch. I uh, I have two screens. I have an edit and live um, an edit screen and a live screen on on this that on this streaming thing, and I forgot to put transition. Oh my goodness, good catch. Thank you for uh, for sending that over. I forgot to hit transition. Oh my goodness. Um, let me recap what I, I kind of did here. So um, I'll re we're gonna we're gonna go back because I completely, completely forgot to hit the transition button. Um, okay, so what I did is on Kinesis, we're gonna actually I'm gonna go back here. On Kinesis, I created a, a data stream. Hopefully it wasn't blocking you for any for very long. Oh, uh, only maybe like 14 minutes. It wasn't too bad. I'm gonna recap what I just did anyways. So we'll be able to catch up pretty fast. Um I forgot to hit the transition button. I'm sorry. Um, so for Amazon Kinesis, what we have as what I did is I just went to data stream and I just created a new data stream. And I called it customer activity switch all, or Twitch. And all I did is I just created a, uh, an AR and then I have the error end for this data stream. Now separately, when I did here, and this is again for the recording because I completely forgot to hit the transition button. Um, I went to um, the IAM um, section um, for services, IAM services. And then what I did is I went to policies and I created a policy. So I just hit the button and create policy. 
And what I did is I, I'm going to just run through this, what I did really quickly. I typed in Kinesis over here because we're going to create a policy. And what we're going to do here is it's for our data application to actually write to Kinesis. So you have to give it permissions or else you're going to get an error. And then what I did here is I just hit, um, I followed, basically I followed this document, some I followed it for just Kinesis stuff, but I just gave it some read permissions. So I think I had described stream, get records, get shard iterator, shard iterator, and then I hit the write, which was um, put record and put records, because we want to be able to write data. And then on resources, I just clicked on um, add a little bar here and I just auto fulfilled it and I just hit add and then I just went to you then you just click the next tags and then you just give after that you hit review I don't put any tags on this and I just gave it a I just gave it a policy name so I just wrote whatever the policy of the description and then after that we already have our permissions over here so that's all said we have read and write permissions and then I just created the policy so that's all I did here and now what we're at, so once we create this policy for Kinesis, for our Kinesis um, service, then I just went to IAM. And what I did here is that we're going to create, a, you can create a new user. I don't know why this is not clicking. Oh, what's going on here? Um, you can create a new user group or a new user, and then you can add the policy to your user. But for some reason, this doesn't want to click right now. What was going on? Huh, let's click users. Oh, there we go. That was weird. Um, anyways, this is the, then we, this is the part where we're on where we're going to add the policy to a user. So if I go back to here, if you scroll to the bottom, we can create it. We can um, we're going to create a new user. We're going to add our user, and then um, you create your user, and then you can set your your um, um, the, the access type that you want, and then you can attach your policy to the user. So if I wanted, I already so I already did this over here. So if I click on this, um, actually we'll just run through this really quickly. Why not? So I'm going to hit add user. And what it's saying is that you're going to create a username, so I'll just put Twitch user here. Um, you're, going to quit, you're going to click on programmatic access, and then you're going to hit next permissions. And then what you're going to hear is copy permissions from an existing user, attach existing policies directly. So we can click on this. And I have the name here, the policy name. What was the policy? Policy name is called this that we just created that we just created and then um, and then you're gonna click next tags and then you're gonna create it and then once you create your your user you're gonna have to generate your access and secret key if I remember correctly um, and then we're but uh yeah we'll go ahead and actually just do this right now so I'm gonna go ahead and create I don't need a review and so we have everything over here so then we're gonna just gonna create a user so now I just created a, a Twitch user and it show and it has the access key and the secret key over here. I'm gonna delete this anyway, so don't worry if you see this because this will be deleted. Um, cool. And then make sure you download the CSV file so you can save it or store it in your hard drive or whatever or do whatever you want, however you want to save it. So you, if anything happens, you can you have your um, access and secret key, um, so you can actually. Uh, actually write to, you can actually access, yeah, write to Kinesis, right? So that's good. Um, okay. So then I think that's it. Yeah, we already attached it our policy, so we're pretty good to go. So now that we kind of have everything set, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hit the be right back button and I'm going to attach a policy. I'm going to attach, um, I'm going to update my, my credentials on the AWS environment, and then I'll be right back. So I'm just going to work on some creds really quick. So I'm just going to move this over, and I'll be right back. But what I'm doing is I'm going to show you really quick what I will be doing. But I need to update, um, I need to update uh, my access and secret key on the terminal for my AWS command line interface. So let me go ahead and do that really quickly. 
because once you have once you every once you create a user and you attach policies or you're working with a certain user you have to make sure you update your credentials for the cl for aws cli so it knows you know exactly what what it's you know what um what you want to write to or you make sure you're writing to something that with the correct policies and permissions in this case we attached our kinesis um, service and the uh the, uh, being able to set the permissions to write to it to this particular user, so we have to use the access and secret key in our AWS, this particular A, um, access key and secret key in our AWS CLI so we can actually write to our Kinesis stream, or else we're gonna get an authentication error or we're gonna get some error where we don't have the permissions to write to our Kinesis stream, and we don't really want that. Actually, we'll show you what this looks like in a minute, what the error looks like. But let me go ahead and fix this really quick. So I've been talking and I didn't do anything. So let me go back. Hold on. I am just updating some stuff really quick. It's a little slow for some reason today. All right. I'm just doing some quick updates on my end. All right, let me go ahead and add that. Oh, let me go back. Hold on, I'm just adding, I'm just taking care of some stuff really quick on, on some of my um, credentials things. There we go. Okay, cool. Okay, I think we should be all set. So I'm gonna go back to live scene again. Okay, and I'm gonna transition to this. Okay, so now that we've updated our user or we created a new user and we added our policy, the next step is to actually write data to our Kinesis stream. Um, so what that looks like is I already have kind of like a code sample to kind of walk through this. I won't go over to, well, actually we'll go over it, but I will share the script to write to Kinesis um, and what it looks like um, in our community GitHub. So I'll be posting that once the blog is up. Again, for every Twitch stream that I do, there's always a blog that will kind of recap what we did. And there always will be code samples and things of how to do certain stuff. So. Basically, what I have is I have Boto3, which is a library that you need for AWS, and then I imported some, um, some libraries. And then basically all I did is I just created a general stream name. So here we're gonna change this to, um, oh, actually, let's go back. Um, our, um, our actual stream name, which is this. So I'm gonna change from this to this. Oh, actually, let's go back. And then I just created a Kinesis client. And then what we're really doing is just putting uh, data to the stream or adding, yeah, writing data to Kinesis. And so I just put the, uh, the file where the JSON data is located. In this case, we're using static data. But if you're using um, real-time data, you can just send that data wherever it's coming from to your Kinesis stream. But because I just have a JSON file and for the purpose of like, you know, how to show how something is working or how to do something, um, I just have a JSON file here. And I'm just like basically opening up the JSON file and then just sending everything, um, you know, iterating over it and sending it over to the client. And then that's really it. We're just literally writing to the Kinesis, uh, to Kinesis. So if I, I already, so here on the, when you, before you run your script, I think you have to run AWS, is it credentials? I forgot the command line, hold on. I think I have to look this up. Um, yeah, I always, configure, that's what it was. So if you wanna know how to like, if you forget anything, how to work with the command line interface or what the commands are, I'll put this in my blog too. But you'll have to run um, AWS configure. And when you do that, you'll have to make sure that you set your access key, access key 
to the new user that you created when you uh, when you attach your Kinesis policy. So if I go back to IAM, we created um, was it it was a Twitch user? Or was it something? We just created a. Um, I thought we just created something. Yeah, Twitch user, it's at the bottom. Oh, that's annoying. There you go. You will add the access key and secret key from the Twitch user, which is what, what we just created over here. So you just make sure you update this with your secret key as well. And then make sure you set your right region. Here I am in US West 2 for, oh, IAM is global anyways, but for the IAM, uh, for Kinesis, I'm in US West 2, so I make sure I set the, re uh, the right region and I don't need to worry about output format, and that's it. So as long as those credentials are right, you're gonna be able, you should not be able to get an error when you do wanna to write to Kinesis. So now that we have that all set, um, I can write Python write to Kinesis stream, or run the script. Oh, and now I'm getting an error. So let's see what's going on. It says resource, let's see. Um, there's always going to be an error, right? I feel like every time I do a Twitch stream, there's going to be some error. Let's see what it is. Resource not found exception. An error occurred when calling put records. Stream activity Twitch policy under account. Oh, Kendra account not found. Oh, interesting. Let me see. This is looking like it's a resource not found exception. Something uh, it's not finding the right account okay let me let me put this on hold and let me figure out i might have to go through my users to, um uh my users and figure out what's going on really quick so let me double check everything to see if it's working and then we should be good so i'm going to move back to be right back because i might have to check some credentials and stuff so one second let me go ahead and figure this out um That's weird. Let me. Oh, I know. Oh, never mind. I think I know what I did. I put the wrong um, stream name. I think I know what happened. I'm going to go back to live stream again. I think I figured it out. Um, hold on. I'm going to pull up my. Where is my Visual Studio Code? I put the policy. I didn't put the, the Twitch stream name. Oh, that's what I did wrong. There we go, this should work now. Okay. Um, Python write to Kinesis, yeah. There we go, this looks good. I just had the wrong, I put the policy name instead of the, kin the, the Kinesis stream name. And then now you see that I have a timer at the bottom. So it just pauses like for a quick five seconds and then it writes it. So it's working now, right? So now we're not getting any exceptions um, to it. Now, if you put the wrong access key and secret key, you should get an authentication, some sort of error or error like that. But that's how you can kind of set your permissions. You can actually have your data application write to Kinesis. So now that we kind of have, and I'll share this again, I'll share this script on GitHub. It's not too bad um, to write to. So I'm going to go ahead and move this over since we're already done with the script. Um, and now, now that we've created our, now that we were able to write to our Kinesis stream, the next step that we need to do is do an integration with Rockset so we can send that. Basically what we're going to have is, it's a JSON file, but typically what you'll have is a, a semi-structured data, right? J data that may have, um, you know, the format may not be defined or you may have some other things, right? Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to, ideally take the semi-structured data and send it to Rockset so we can actually run actually run queries on it and we can actually make sense of what the data is doing um, and basically index all the data that's coming in um, through Rockset. So I'm going to go to the console and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a collection. So now we're going to create a, con a, connect a collection with Amazon Kinesis. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create an integration and I'm gonna call this integration name Kinesis customer streaming data and I'll put Twitch. Of course, because I have so many integrations and so many collections, I'm super verbose here and I know it's ridiculous, but that's just the way it is right now. Um, okay, cool. 
and I'm just going to put the description right um, uh, integration um, with customer activity data from Kinesis. Okay. So um, these instructions tell you like what you need to configure an IAM policy so Rockset can actually get the data and you can actually um, be able to eventually run your queries and create your API endpoints to the queries that you write. And so basically we're just gonna follow um, this or we're gonna navigate back to the IAM console. And then from there, we're gonna, um, we're gonna actually copy um, our policy and make sure you change the stream name to the stream name that you want to use. In this case, I'm just gonna put, instead of my stream name, which is customer, whatever it is, customer activity, customer activity to Twitch, I'm gonna put a star at the end. So for my purposes, I can send, um, I'll be able to work with any stream. But if you want to be able to be specific on what type of stream that you wanted, that you want Rockset to read, then you just put that over there. You put the particular stream name over here. And then we're just going to save it. So I'm going to go back to IAM policy, and I'm going to go back to policies over here on the left hand, left nav bar, I guess. And I'm going to go ahead and create policy. Now I can just navigate to the JSON file, or the JSON tab, I should say. And I'm gonna paste this, and instead of just putting your stream here, I'm just gonna put a star, and that will just mean everything, right? Everything under the sun. And now if we go to Visual Editor, we'll update, and that looks good. So now we're gonna hit um, Next Tags. And I don't need tags, so we're going to review this, and I'm going to give it a policy name. So I am going to call this, um, what is this? Uh, customer activity cases, the third. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I feel like I should have the third, the fourth, and the fifth in these names. Um, Twitch, and I'm just going to put the date so I know what this is for. Okay. Um, Rockset. Oh, they don't have a Kinesis um, integration. A seven zero two zero two one for Twitch. Cool. Uh, great. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna copy this name um, again, so I have it when I write my blog. I don't have to rethink what exactly did I do. So rock set Kinesis policy. Uh, in a, yeah, policy. So integration. Um, and then I'm actually going to put the integration name here too. So I'm just going to copy this really quickly so I know um, what the integration is. All right. I take notes because I will not remember this at the end of the day. All right. So this looks good. And then we're going to create our policy. Cool. So now that we created our policy, now the next steps in the instruction is to configure an IAM rule, and we're gonna do a cross account rule. Um, so we're gonna um, go back here, and then we're gonna do roles. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a role. And we're gonna do uh, another AWS account, and we're gonna put in the account ID. So the account ID comes from here. So all you're gonna do is copy this and then paste it over here. And then on the bottom, we're gonna hit require, require external ID. And if you scroll to the bottom on the console <clears throat> where we're gonna do our integration, it gives you the external ID. We're gonna copy that and we're just gonna paste it over here. And that looks good. So now we're gonna hit next permissions. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Oof, that looks good. Um, and then we're gonna attach our policy. So we already, because we're being so diligent today, I already have notes on what the policy name is. And it's the longest name ever, but that's okay. Um, and then I'm gonna hit next tags. We don't need tags, so I'm gonna hit review, and then I'm just gonna give it a role name. So the role name will be the Rockset Kinesis Customer Activity Role Twitch 0708 2021. 
I'm telling you, I'm going to get a medal prize on these names, 2021, all right. So I'm going to just copy the role name over here on my notes really quick. So when I write my blog, I'll be able to refer to it later. And I'm just going to say role to do Roxette and Kinesis integration. Um, cool. And I'm going to go ahead and, and then we already have our a policy attached, so that looks good. And I'm going to go ahead and create the role. Now, when you create your role, you're going to get a role ARN, and we're going to use that ARN in the rock set integration section so um, we uh, can do the integration. So I'm going to copy the role over here. And um, I'm going to click on it. And oh, actually, no, I just wanted to click on it. What am I doing? I just want to get the ARN. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this ARN. Actually, I can just hit the copy button here. Now, if I go here, there's a section for the ARN, and then you just paste that. Make sure that looks right, and then you're going to save the integration. All right, and I already have the integration name written, saved, so we'll save it. Cool. So now that we've created an integration, um, with Kinesis, um, we're gonna head. We're gonna be able. We're gonna start to create a collection from this integration. So now we're gonna work on our collection name, C customer activity, activity. Oh my God, I can't spell today. Um, Twitch uh, Kinesis. Um, Twitch collection. Okay. So I'm also gonna write that down so I don't forget it. Collection. Um, Rock set collection, hold on. Rock set collection. All right. Um, description, um, streaming data coming into rock set. All right, cool. So now we're gonna type in our Kinesis stream name because my memory is not that great right now. Uh, I think, yeah, this is it. So I'm gonna just copy and paste that right like that and then the AWS region I'm using is US West 2 and we're not going to see data so this is the tricky part and I actually so I actually have gotten hung up on this before in order to see the data you actually need to have your script running um, even though we just sent data to Kinesis and we didn't get any errors or anything like that if your if your script is not running you won't be able to see the data in Kinesis so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run the script. It will be kind of be repeating, but eventually we'll be able to see the preview. And sometimes I forget that you need to do that. But yes, make sure you run your script in the background. And then it'll take like maybe a few seconds or so to do the source preview. And then we should be good. So yeah, we're just waiting. So yeah, um, the nav, are you still with us? So it's just taking a little bit, but you should, we should be able to see the data coming through now. Oh, cool. Where are you um, chatting from? Or have you worked with AWS and Rockset before with like Kinesis streams and stuff? Oh, cool, nice. So I'm just waiting for the source preview right now. It is taking a little bit. Yeah. 
Yeah, usually you should be able to see a source preview, but it's taking a little bit to kind of see it, so it might be just a slight lag. Oh, there we go. It just popped up. Nice. So now we have our script running and we're able to see the source preview. So this is what the data looks like before we, uh, before Rockset kind of takes the data in. Um, when Rockset, when we cr actually create a collection is when Rockset actually indexes the data um, through converge index, which is row, columnar, and inverted index. So um, when you write your queries, this is why we're able, this is why Rockset is able to get uh, in, like millisecond query performance is through um, converge index. So you'll be able to see like the, the fields and um, the data inside. So we have customer city, customer email, things like that. So these are our customer activity. Um, so unfortunately, no, I was just looking around programming streams and came across yours and had to notify on the screen issue. Thank you so much. I really totally appreciate that. I only know some web stuff and getting into React, whatever you're doing now is way over my head. Oh, okay, um, no worries. Uh, actually ask all the questions this is great and i actually am really thankful that you caught that um sometimes it's like a, it's, it's an easy miss when you have two uh, screens and you forgot to transition your screen so i'm on stream labs right now um but actually just ask all the questions i i've worked with react too um i have another app that i built with like ec2 instances um Lam AWS Lambda and um, some visualization tool on some open source project that I did. It's somewhere hidden in my um, files that I have to do, but I was actually gonna do kind of a tutorial on that. I just haven't had time to clean up the app and actually write the blog. But let me like preface this for you and honestly just ask all the questions because that's like the best way. Um, so some web stuff, so we're like, we're seeing like in a, like when you're dealing with web, like real time data is usually not a big thing, but when you're coming into like data applications like um, fraud detection or you're building a commerce um, app and you wanna be able to, I'm actually gonna create the collection over here really quick so we can get that going. Um, when real time analytics, when you're building like gaming apps or let's say you're using Unity or some other, uh, some other applications and stuff, you want to be able to detect in real time, like with like millisecond query performance, like really, really fast if something is happening. Um, and the idea and the thing behind that is like as an industry, we're all a lot of companies are starting to migrate from batch data where they usually get like weekly or monthly updates, depending on whatever their use case, like for reports or something like that to more real time data where let's say you have a customer that's like, let's say you have an e-commerce app and you have a customer that wants to make apple pie and you're seeing that they're getting apples and sugar and all these things and you, you maybe they forgot to add in the vanilla extract or they forgot to do that. How do you make that recommendation kind of in real time? How do you, you know, how do you write the queries? How do you, how do you, how do you send that to the customer so that they're able to increase the purchase spend and off and, and, and hopefully more often than not, ha your business has more of an increased revenue, right? When you think of real-time data, some of the major advantages of that is like retention, customer retention, increase in revenue. Um, other things could be like, um, kind of like um, customer satisfaction, like when you, when you're, let's say your dashboards are loading fast, right? And you have customers who are using your, your dashboards or things like that to visualize what's going on. Like for example, on our stuff, we have a metrics tab that you wanna be able to see within real time, you know, what's going on or if there are any issues and things like that that's going on with some of the applications that you're running. You, wanna, you don't wanna wait minutes for that. You wanna be able to see that in real time. So kind of what this is, is like Rockset is like a real time indexing database that's built for the cloud. So it's, uh, it's cloud native. And basically what you're able to do is you're able to write SQL queries, so queries that you want to you want to be able to understand your data, you write queries. And you can write queries from all disparate data sources. So in this case, we're going to be working on um, queries that from data that's coming in from DynamoDB and data that's also streaming data, which is coming in from Kinesis. And we're going to be able to join, join, search, and aggregate those queries, or yeah, join, search, and aggregate, write queries that join, search, and aggregate to be able to understand what the data is saying or what's going on with the data. Um, so if you've, I don't know if you've built, um, if you've worked with um, 
like Django or some other apps uh, that you can write, you know, you, depending on what, uh, you're using Postgres. If you probably, if you're, if you're a web dev, you probably use Postgres or MySQL at some point. Um, those are what we call like OLTP or t like transactional databases. Um, and the things with like Postgres and uh, MySQL when you're thinking about um, real time, when you're thinking about real time data is there's always some issues that come up with performance and scaling. I'm gonna stop this script right now because it should be done by now. Um, performance and scaling. And so when you're having a lot of customers, let's say it's 5 p.m. or let's say you it's Black Friday and you're running a sale and you're storing all the transactional data in Postgres, for example, or MySQL, doesn't matter. Um, and all of a sudden you have a surge of customers wanting to buy certain products that are deeply discounted. How do you handle that type of load and concurrency? Right, and, and this is where you get into um, a lot of like, uh, in first, what we call like operational costs, where you're gonna have to hire a team or maybe a few engineers to help scale your databases, manage the servers and clusters and things like that, um, depending on how you orchestrated your backend and how, how you built your backend. So the idea with Rockside is that um, the scaling and performance are pretty seamless because Rockside is serverless. So the idea is that you just can navigate to specific, um, what we call virtual instances, and scale scale your compute um, as necessary. You know, you can scale up or scale down your compute as necessary, depending on, like your performance, your load, or your concurrency, and um, things like that. So when it comes to like you know those types of stuff, uh, Rockset is like real time data is a really good use case, and in particular, Rockset is a way to do real time data where it doesn't require a lot of operational costs. You don't need a team to scale up because it's serverless. It's kind of like DynamoDB in that instance. Um, but also that your queries do come back pretty fast with like out of the box. Like you don't usually, if you've worked with open source data, you have to do a lot of scaling and performance things. And you might have like usually there are teams devoted to um, other open source projects where you can do real time data. In this case, uh, with Rockset, it, it does. You don't need. You don't. You don't really need that. So, I can go on about that. But yeah, this is really focused on real time data and building um, really incredible performant and scalable applications um, uh, that don't. That as a developer, like if you're a developer, that you don't need um, expertise. Like you don't need. You don't need to be an expert in like server or clusters or things like that to manage and scale up and. Kind of know the ins and outs because it um, rocks that kind of already automatically scales as your application scales up or down so long story short i guess that was a long spiel about it but yeah honestly if you're watching this and it's over your head uh, i hope that i would hope that you ask questions because i don't want that to be the case but um yeah so so basically what we did now is we have streaming data coming in from kinesis and um we are, uh, you can see that the data is actually showing up from Kinesis. And then if we run a query on this collection, we can see what the data looks like now. I just did a select star all. Um, but you can see what this kind of um, looks like over here now. So now we have our customer activity um, data coming in from Kinesis. And what we did last week is we just added, the, I just added that data to DynamoDB to keep it really simple. But traditionally, the right way to do it is you would send it, it would be streaming data that you would need to um, send into Rockset. So I just redid that portion. So it's technically more correct and we have more time to kind of work on it. So now the next step is that we want to be able to understand what's going on with our um, kind of what's going on with our um, e commerce thing. So the premise of this kind of Twitch stream is that. We have an e-commerce um, company, and we're running a campaign where we're selling um, capri pants and and tops. I'm I'm actually a runner, and so like, I'm a sucker for capri pants and tops. Like that's like anytime it's like sixty percent off, I'm on it for buying. Um, so I'm one of those suckers that would buy on deeply discounted stuff. And so, uh, what we're trying to understand is again, as I faked the data and just seeded it, but I'm trying to understand basically. How are customers making their purchases? Are they buying both items together? Are they not buying both items together? 
what promo code is really popular in certain regions, things like that. What's the total revenue at a certain time point, things like that. So when you're really wanting, um, when you're really trying to design, you know, future campaigns, you want to be, you want to make a database decision. You just don't want to like, you know, touch your finger and like, oh, is the sky, is the wind blowing, you know, north or east? Like, you can't, when you're building a company and stuff, you can't do that. You're gonna, your company's going to fail right away and you're not going to be able to make the right decisions um, if you decide to run a campaign and things like that. So you gotta, this is why uh, running queries and, and coming up with really sound data is really important and that's the premise behind this, um, this example or this kind of tutorial, I guess. So I'm gonna. So the first thing of what we're gonna look for is like if even if you're dealing like typically when you're dealing with Kinesis Stream or streaming data or semi-structured data, you might not know what all the fields are or what the particular things look like, right? And so if you click over here on the collections part and you click on this little checkbox about the collection you want to analyze, you can scroll down and you can see all the available fields on the left hand side. And so what this is doing is that. Usually, like if you're dealing with Postgres or MySQL, um, a field can have one particular data type. Maybe it's a string, uh, string type, or it's an int type, or I think there are like you know whatever types there are. There are a lot of types in MySQL, um, but usually um, a field can only have one particular type. So with Rockset, a field can have multiple data types, which is really interesting. Um, and I'm trying to find an example. I don't think I do have an example because I, I'm the one who wrote the data. But yeah, you can see the occurrence. You'll see the type, the string occurrence, and the, how much of the occurrence is. So for example, some instances, you might have a string type um, that's 50% occurrence, and then you'll have a string type, and then you'll have a null type, and it'll tell you about the occurrence. So maybe null types are 50% of your occurrences and stuff like that. And so when you're dealing with semi-structured data like this, in your queries, when you're running your queries, you'll have to take into account or filter out the data types that you don't want, or maybe you might have to convert one data type into another. Um, for example, if you're doing aggregations and some numbers come in as an int or some numbers come in as a string, you wanna be able to do, you wanna be able to convert the string types to int types so you can actually do aggregations and stuff like that. So those are different things to think about when you're dealing with semi-structured data that you might not have to have thought about before when you're dealing with other um, um, relational databases and stuff, but uh, that's kind of pretty easy to take care of when you're writing queries. So, all right, so let's go ahead and start working on some queries that we want to kind of uh, evaluate right now. So maybe, you know, one thing that we want to look for is that, that, that kind of really comes top of mind is that we want to be able to look at maybe like total revenue, right? What's the total revenue that we've made so far, right? And you can just keep updating your dashboard to do that. The other option too is you can also run total revenue by hour or you know whatever time segment that you wanna do. You know, that's the other case. So, but what we're gonna do here is just to get total revenue for right now, um, which will require um, some sort um, of aggregations. So let's see. Let's see what other, um, I have to kind of refresh what I did two weeks ago. I actually um, need to think that. So we have order items, we have product, oh, product Twitch, order item Twitch, promo Twitch. These are all the kind of things I did two weeks ago. So I think that's four. Am I missing anything? Uh, I think that's it. Oh, customer Twitch. Okay, these are the four things that we need. Okay, this looks good. So what I did is I'm just, I just basically, I've been displaying like all the collections that I want to work with today um, and then figure out how we can get the, the total revenue. So order items, I, if you look at the data, this is like basically transactional data, like what people bought and stuff. So if I look over here, um, we have customer ID, discount applied, um, order date, order ID, which is a number or an int, I guess. Yeah, it's called an int. Order quantity, order total, product ID, and promo ID. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna, I'm actually gonna work out of two tabs today, query editor. So I can kind of have my quick, um, quick things I wanna run over here. And then the, the, the queries I wanna turn into an API endpoint will be on this part over here. So basically what we're gonna do, like the really cool thing with this is that 
instead of writing queries inside your applications, um, you can just create an endpoint to your queries and then just execute them from your application. So as a as a as a as like a reminder, if you go to docs.roxet.com and you go to developer tools, there's like all these clients that you can use. So if we click on Python client, um, you in your side your data application, you can execute your query lambdas. So I'm working out of the console today because it's just really easy to show like how certain parts are working. But if you wanted to write your queries inside your application and then create a query lambda inside your application and things like that, there's there's sample codes to, to show you like how you can kind of do that. Uh, as a quick note, like the, the best practice for this is to create an integration inside. When you create like an integration like I did with Kinesis and Rockset, you know, I got the AR and um, I, you know, I put the account ID and external ID on AWS. I got the AR and from our Kinesis tree, or for AR and from our role, put it into Rockset. That's best done outside of the data application to just manually do that through the UI of AWS and Rockset, just when you create an integration point. And then from there, everything else can be done inside your data application. So writing queries, creating query lambdas, which are API endpoints, executing your API endpoints so you can see the data from your queries and things like that, or the results from your queries. Um, so, okay. So I just wanted to show that. But let's go back to the console over here. Um, so to kind of comment some stuff out, you can just put the little slash point, or the two dashes here. Um, I can also do select star from, what is it, comments dots order item switch. And oh, limit. I'll just limit one right now to see what it looks like. I'm just going to put my cursor there and I'm going to write it and I just like looking at the JSON personally because it's just easier for me to see what's going on. So we have order total, order quantity, order dates, um, discount applied. The event time is I think the time of ingestion. We have customer ID, promo ID, and order ID. Okay, cool. So we have a lot of stuff over here. Um, so if we look at order total, we're getting a value of one. And where's order total? Oh, actually, no, it's a string. There we go. So um, it comes in a string and there's a dollar sign. And we all know that we can't aggregate um, order total with, you can't aggregate a string with a dollar sign, right? It's just not going to work. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to have to do some conversions over here to fix this. Now, in my previous stream, I gave an example of how to do field mapping. So if you needed to convert, let's say you needed to do field mappings, like let's say you wanted to re-ingest this and you wanted to do field mappings so you don't have to do rejects at the at runtime. So there's a difference. You you can do re you can you can do manipulations on this field. Let's say you wanted to change, you wanted to get rid of the dollar sign and add and make 30 an int and you want to cast it into an int from a string. You can do that at the time of ingestion instead of at runtime. And the advantage of there is it could be a slight performance gain um, depending on how much data you have, right? If you're doing if you're doing rejects on terabytes of data and you and you run this and you kind of do this at you know at runtime at terabytes of data, you, you could see significant improvement if you just ran um, your field mappings and converted this 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 string into an int. Um, uh, at the time of ingestion. I'm going to do it at runtime to show you what it kind of looks like, but I do have a field mappings blog um, that is coming out soon that shows you how to do field mappings on an example like this, which I think this is pretty relatable to some extent, depending on how people um, construct their APIs and stuff. So, so the first thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to uh, get that $30 string into an int. So um, one thing that you can do is you can do, we're going to try to figure out how to do this. I've done this previously on my stream with Airbnb data, I believe. Um, so it's not uncommon that you get data that kind of looks like this. It's actually more common than you think from what I've seen. Um, but one thing that we can do is we can do, um, we can do rejects. So if I go to, actually, let's go to docs.rockset.com. If I go to rejects. Uh, replace. You can see an example of how you can replace something or you can extract 
um, something if you if you want. And so you provide the string of what it looks like, the pattern that you kind of you want, and then what you want for the replacement and stop. So this is kind of the example of what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna copy this example really quick. And I'm gonna paste it over here. And I'm just gonna, we're gonna work from this actually. Um, I'm just gonna start working on what this query looks like. And then from there, we're gonna, we're gonna work with raw data. So the exact, uh, what the exact data is here. So if I run this, our, um, when I go to the JSON, the exact data we want to work with is this $30 thing. And so I'm just going to put this in comments right now. So I have that as a reference. Um, so if you go back to the docs here, um, I'm going to move this over to the left. You have the string that you want. So our string is this. So I'm going to replace foo bar baz with this. Actually, I just can do that. It's fine. And then <clears throat> what we need to do is when you look on the docs, it says uh, the pattern that you want to replace. Um, there is a, oh God, I keep, for, I keep forgetting this. Is it Rejects 101? Yeah. I really like the site when I'm working with Rejects. I'm not a Rejects guru by any means. I've just gotten a little bit better since I have to do it for some of the things that I do. But you know, if you're not sure, you can start working with your regular um, expressions and then type in your string. So if I want to type in like $30, uh, um, you can start working with um, what you want it to be. So in this case, let's say if we wanted to do, um, we wanted to get rid of this. So let's say if we do, um, I don't know, there's like a dollar sign. Let's see. Let's see how we want to do common tokens. Let's see. And if you know this on the top of your head, feel free to share it. I'm gonna see if I can work this out really quick. I've done this a few times already from previous streams. Um, single character A, B, or C. All right, I need water really quick. Um, common tokens. Let's see. We have white space character, non-white space character, one or more of general tokens. Let's look at that, just anchors. We don't need anchors. Um, yeah, end of string or beginning of string. Yeah, that's what I remember. Let's go back. Start of string. Oh wait, I keep forgetting there's an X button over here. Um, I'm thinking out loud. And then we have a match. So what we can do is we can, um, I almost wanna say, let's see what this does. There you go. So yeah, this looks like, so this looks fine. So I just kind of just extracted the little dollar sign really quick um, from here. And then, um, what we can do here is I can copy this and I can put that in here. And then I can just replace that dollar sign with like an empty space or something like that. There we go. So 
that's what we have over here to get rid of that dollar sign. Um, if you go back to the docs, yeah, I just replaced it with a space. So that's all we really need to do. We just need to get rid of it. The other one you can do is you can extract it. So you can just extract the 30 if you wanted to do. So you can just get rid of extract this part too. So that's the other one that you can do. Maybe that's if you wanted to work that out. You can do redux extract. And then you can just figure out how to extract the 30 and then um, you're fine. So that's that's the other way you could have you could do it. I just did replace, but either one should be fine. It's all the same, right? Um, cool. So now that we kind of have how to how to get how to get rid of this like thirty dollar sign that we have in our data, we can start working with um, our query on aggregations, right? So the thing that when you're getting revenue, right, you need to use, you need to get, um, you need to get a sum of all the values. So usually when you're dealing with queries, there is a sum stuff going on there. These are all like the aggregations that you can do. You can do average, max, uh, min, etc., and then there's sum. And we just want to sum all the all the values. So it's just that. So we can do going back here. We can do select sum um, x. And then here, before we want to be able to um, typecast typecast this. Was it? I think it's cast. Yeah, tricast or you can cast. So the difference between cast and tricast is um, tricast. If you're unable to convert one type to another type, you'll get like a null back, and cast will be a hard fail. So if it's not able to um, cast it, it'll, it'll fail it automatically. Um, so I think today we'll be using cast because if you can't cast one to a type, you're not gonna be able to do aggregations and then it's just not gonna work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to select some and we're gonna cast our, um, our, um, our number or our string, right? The, the results of this is that you get a string back. We want to convert this string into an int. Um, so, one second. Um, we want to convert that to a string. So we want to do this as floats. Okay. I'm going to get rid of this really quickly, but I'm just going to try to get through this. So we have as floats. That's what we want to do. Well, actually, this is wrong. There we go. There we go. So we have regex replace this. And then what we're going to do is we get a number, we get a string back. We're going to cast this string as a float, which is this part over here. And then um, what we're going to do is we're going to save that as we're going to, we're going to rename it as um, total revenue. Um, like that. And then we're gonna we're it's gonna come from um, commons um, dot um, order item twitch, and I'm gonna type in the L. So now what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna run this query. Where is that query? Oh, it's right here. This query here, and what we really want to typecast is order total. So I'm gonna copy this field, and instead of the thirty dollars, I'm just gonna write dot o dot order total. Oh, actually, no, wrong place, over here. Sorry, I'm gonna typecast this as O dot order total. There we go. I'm gonna move this a little bit to the bottom so it's easier to read. So now what we're doing is that we have this $30, 30 string, $30 string. We're gonna get a 30 string back. We're gonna cast it as a float. We're gonna save this whole thing. This whole thing is a total revenue. So it's just gonna be renamed. And then it's going to come from order item twitch.o. So now if I run this, we get a total revenue back. And so now, um, so now like ideally, I, I am working with static data, but ideally, like as people are making purchases, you can also kind of order it by time or add some time selection filter if you want. Um, and you can start getting orders by certain hours of day, certain minutes, or however length that you want it. But I'll keep it pretty simple right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this query and I'm going to put it in a fresh tab. So I just opened up a new tab with a plus sign. And I'm going to create an API endpoint to this query. 
Um, and I'm going to call it total revenue. And I'll just put Twitch as, as the suffix so I know where this is coming from. It gets total revenue. Um, and that's it. And you just keep, keep running it, and it'll just keep doing the aggregations in real time as you execute your queries. So as more data comes in, this number will be updated. And I'm going to create an API endpoint or a RESTful API endpoint. So I'm just going to create. Um, I'm going to actually going to. I'm going to put a date here too. I'm telling you, I'm going to be the queen of long names today. I just have so much stuff that it's really hard to keep track of. So I'm. Just, I have like a notepad right uh, next to me. So I'm just writing this right now. Query lambda one. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and create this query lambda, and you'll see kind of what this looks like. So we have our SQL over here. Um, so you can see um, live what a SQL query looks like. You can see the collections that we used, and you can see the version. Because we just created our first query, and we haven't updated this query, we're, that's why you only see one version, but you'll see that the tag is latest. So similar to like what you're used to with GitHub and stuff when you do versions. Um, so if I go back to summary, we kind of have the metadata of what this looks like. And you'll see that we're going to, we have this API endpoint. And then also you'll see that we have this like curl command. So if I um, copy this and I put my API key, um, it should run. So I'm going to clear this. Actually, let me put this in a notepad because I do need to put the API key in really quick. I do update all my API keys, so I uh, um, this will change. So I just need to go to API keys and just copy this really quick. Um, and I'll go back really quick. Let's go back to query lambdas. Um, there we go. And do, do, do. I need to update the query lambda with my API key so it doesn't fail. And I'm going to show you what this looks like on the command line. So if I copy, if I update my API key and I put this over here, I don't know if you're able to see this or not, um, you'll see that we get the total revenue over here. So yeah, it, it's literally just like a RESTful endpoint that you can execute. So if we're able to get the data that kind of looks like this, we're able to visualize the, uh, the data on retool. So now how do you use retool Let's say you're building, you want to use retool and you're trying to visualize, you know, what's going on. So let's go see how we can use this on retool. So I already have like my real retool app that I built that we worked in two weeks ago. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to add like a, um, what is it? Just add these little widgets and stuff like these little components. Really, we, what we need is like a simple text box. So I don't know, we can just add a text box here. Um, this is not meant to look pretty, by the way. It's meant to look functional. So if this is not the prettiest of dashboards, uh, I didn't say I can do pretty. I can do functional, though. Um, we can add our default value. So what we're going to do is I just added a quick label here. Um, but what we really need to do is we need to, on the retool side, so now we have our queries working on Rockset, and we tested it over here that it works um, for the API endpoint. So what I'm going to do is I'm on the retool. I already created my app. I'm going to go to, um, was it import from query library? Yeah, import. You're going to click on this new button. You're going to hit import query library. And then when you on the resource part over here, I don't know if you can see that or not, you're going to hit rest query rest API over here. And then when you do this, when you do this, you're going to hit the action type is post. And then you're going to put the endpoint here that we want to use. And in this case, our endpoint is just this query lambda endpoint here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to paste it over here. And then on the headers, it's going to be our authorization header. And then the next one we're going to add new is content type. And so authorization is our um, is our uh, as our API key um, info, so I'm just going to copy that and the AP, my API key essentially, and I'm just going to put it under authorization here. And then a content type would just be application JSON, application JSON, yeah. And if you don't know that, it, you can just go back here and you'll just see that it's over here, and then you'll see the dash H for headers, so you know to put that in the header section of um, 
your requests basically. Um, and then that's it. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna save our query. Well, you can actually preview a query to see if it works. Oh, so we got an authentication um, error. Auth authorization is not a legal HTTP header name. What did I do wrong? I think I did something wrong. Yeah, it is. Maybe I spelled it wrong. Is that really it? What? All right, well, I don't know what happened here. What is wrong? Authorization is not a legal HTTP header name. I think I did something wrong. I am stuck. I have no idea what just happened. Let's see. Okay. Am I having like a little um, cancel? Let's save this query really quick. I'm just going to save it as query three for now. This should be right. If I run this, this ran right. Okay. I'm not sure why this is failing, but authorization is a valid header information. What am I doing wrong? Um, Am I having a space? Maybe I put a space by accident. Preview. Query ran successfully. Okay, I think I just had an extra space or something like that. Actually, let me test it. Let me add a space really quick. Okay, I think that, yeah, I think that was the case. I had an extra space in there and I didn't notice it. Um, there we go. Um, cool, so now, um, now that we ran the query, um, you can also change this. So it says it ran successfully. And if you look over here, we get total revenue back on this. So I'm just going to change the query name. Oh, I'm going to save it really quick. So now we can save it. And I just put total revenue here. Revenue. Okay. And then you'll see it updated over here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to need to visualize this really quick. So these are like if you're building internal tools for your company and you want to see data, this is really good to use. You can also use like other stuff too, like preset or superset or, I don't know, Grafana, things like that. So there's all different types of things that are available. So to for the default value, what we're going to do is we're going to hit the curly brace and I'm going to type in revenue, or was it total revenue dot data or is it? Oh, total revenue dot. Let me run this again. I'm going to move this up a little bit. Um, total, oh, dot results. Okay. So I'm going to go back here. Total, I think it's dot results. No, dot data. Oh, there you go. Dot data dot results. Uh, dots. So these, um, when you're dealing with labels or text boxes in Retool, they don't take in objects. So you have to, they only accept string types. So you have to be able to uh, convert them to a string. Um, to string. There you go. Um, so when it, this was like the confusing point. I actually got an error. Like if I run this, and I hit enter. Um, you get it. You get an error that says unexpected token F in JSON at position zero. It doesn't actually fulfill it in the bracket, so you have to add the function call, and then you get the right information here. So yeah, labels and taxes on Retool do not accept object types. But if you're working with table, it accepts an object type. So you have to like drill down to the very value that you want, and then make sure it's have our total value listed here. So now if I go enter value, I'll just put total revenue, um, total um, campaign revenue, campaign revenue, revenue. Okay, cool. Um, and, oh, I didn't save that. Placeholder. Oh, maybe that means, okay, we'll put that zero. I wonder if you can rename this label really quickly. Oh yeah, you can. There you go, right there. Then we can make this box a little bigger. Okay, or a lot bigger. I'm telling you, I am very verbose these days because I have so much stuff. Um, cool. And then you can just position it and, and do whatever you want on it or whatever, that's fine. Like these are just all advanced stuff for text stuff. 
can make it pretty, can do whatever. I'm not going to worry about that today. That can be worked on separately. Um, cool. So now this is how we get um, total revenue into retool. And then the thing that you can do is you can constant. So you, you know, it's annoying when you have a dashboard and you just have to click run all the time, right? You honestly, the ideal thing is for it to just manually run at, at so many X seconds or minutes that you, that you want or whatever. So you can change this as run query automatically with inputs changes. Um, and then you can actually add a slider. There's like a little trick to this. Let's see if I can remember what the trick was. You can add like a, is it a switch or a slider? Maybe it's a switch. Um, oh yeah, here's a slider. There you go. I'm going to add a slider really quick. Oh, wait. Uh, I don't, all right, well, I am having some UI problems here. I'm going to try to move this over. Okay, I'm going to add, just add this to the top really quick. Um, and then you have your value. So you can set your minute value. You can set it to 10,000. I think, there we go, something like that. Oh, let's go back to value. Um, we can see refresh. And then let's go to, let's see if we can figure out how to refresh this. Um, we'll go to hidden, styles, and then show on desktop, show on mobile. Okay. Um, let's see if I remember how to do this. Those bots are everywhere. Oh, um, I uh, wanna, oh yeah, I know, they're annoying. They're just spamming or whatever. Yeah, it's it's kind of annoying. Actually, um, the NAB, how do you think of this so far? Is this like helping a little bit for like real-time data or like, um, do you have any questions for anything like this? I feel like I'm rambling a, lo a lot over here. Um. What I'm trying to do is figure out how I can refresh this really quickly. Um, I'm think I gotta go back and think about it really quickly. So we can go back here and we can do step size one. And I'm gonna, um, I'm just taking it in. I know this is a lot. I, uh, I know this is a lot, don't worry. We can trigger query um, total revenue. Oh yeah, you can run on whatever query you want. So we can just run on total revenue. Um, we don't want to debounce. I wonder if I. I don't think I, okay, it's starting to change. So you see how I changed? So what I did is I just hooked up this, this um, slider to an event handler and I just hit trigger and then I just run query automatically when inputs change. Um, So anytime I change something, it should be automatically changing. It should be refreshing every um, so many seconds and stuff automatically. Um, I'm trying to see how I can get this going um, for automatic refresh. Let's 
see. Well, anyways, I'll come back to this. I don't know why it's not automatically refreshing. Yeah, what inputs change? That's the one you want. Well, this is how we can get like some of the internal tools and stuff uh, on here. So now like, what time is it? It's 1237, we might have time for another query that we can write. So let's go ahead and look at another query that we kind of want to do. So I'm going to go back to the query editor where we have all our collections listed over here. And uh, let's see, what, um, so the other thing that we can do is that we can um, we can kind of see um, we can kind of look at customers uh, get a percentage of sales um, from com customers who bought let's say capri pants or uh, tops together right that's like one thing that we can do um, another thing that we can look at is um, I don't know, if you're running a campaign, what are some things that you kind of um, would be interested in? You know, one other thing that you could be interested in is like customers who uh, who signed up and use, uh, like for example, signed up, who just signed up, so they're, new, they're, they're an acquisition, right? They're a new acquisition and they use the promo code as well. Um, that's another really interesting to kind of, um, to kind of look at as well. So. Maybe that's a good thing because then um, what we'll need to do is if we do that, we can actually join um, customers. Uh, we can join customers and um, and see what their transactions are through the order, order item collection, which has like all the purchases and stuff. And we can also look at um, the promo section as well or the promo collection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the Untitled 2 um, tab. And we're gonna work on another query. This this untitled two is kind of like my working space, and then I'll create a new tab for the final query that we'll work on. So, on top we have um, I can put this in. So we're gonna select star um, from commons dot um, I don't know promo. Is it promo promo one Twitch? Yeah. And we can just limit one so we can see what the data looks like really quick. You can also use describe. I'm just used to kind of doing this. And you can see what the table looks like. So we have promotion type, promo description, promo start date, um, whether um, a promo code could be used once or multiple times. We have an ID and we have a promo type. Uh, so, and then the other one that we have is we have customers too. So we're gonna select star from commons dot um, customer twitch and see and then I'm going to run this really quickly and I can look at the JSON and you can see kind of what the customer um, collection looks like so we have the region we have the date we have the ID we have the name we have the email the city this is the source that it's coming from which is DynamoDB so usually you'll store data like that in MySQL, Postgres, DynamoDB, doesn't matter. Um, and then you have all that information here. So I'm going to put limit one. Let's run that again. Okay, now this is a little bit easier to read. So now you can see what this data looks like over here. So ideally what we want to do is um, we we want to be able to see there like if we want to see um, customers who signed up and use the new promo code, which are new acquisitions for the or the e-commerce e company, we want to see their and potentially, um, yeah, I, those are the basic things that we want to see. We'll keep it really simple today. 
Um, but typically, yeah, when you're running a company, you do want to see what acquisition looks like. And eventually you want to see what the, what the cost per acquisition is. You know, when you pay for advertising or you pay for things, there's going to be um, a cost to doing that and how much it costs to get a customer into your into actually making a purchase. So those are costs associated. So actually, so it's actually like typically uh, data that I would want to look at if I'm kind of uh, running my own campaign. We're doing it on a very simplified scale, right? Um, but the idea is kind of there. So I'm going to move the queries that we worked on just 10 minutes ago or so a little down, and we're going to start with a fresh, fresh query over here. So what we want to do is we want to select, um, we want to be able to select um, like the, the customer name, promo, and stuff. So we want to be able to select from the customer's table. Um, let's just see. So if we go back to the customer collection here, you'll see all the fields that we want to probably use. We want to see, ideally what we want to see is their, um, um, we want to see their name. So c.customer name. So that's already filling out over here. We want to see their email. So c.customer um, email, which is automatically filling out over here. Um, and we want to see, I don't think we need to worry. Yeah, we might want to see their ID, right? So I'll put c.customer ID in the beginning, their name, because some people can have the same name. So you need to be able to fil filter them through an ID if that's the case. Um, cool. And so let's say you just want to see um, what that looks like. Um, and we want to be able, to, and we just want to look at all the customers who use a promo code. That's it. We're not really interested in what the promo code is. So if we go under promo, the promo collection, you'll see that there's, um, there's like, uh, there's like different types of promo. There's like community and some other stuff. But so. In this case, we just want to see how many of them just use a promo code. And then if you want to run further analysis, you can separate it by the different promo codes that they use. So what we really want to do is we want to join from um, our, our, um, our order item um, table, which is like where, um, where um, customers um, I'll put order item dot OI. So that's where like all the transactions happen. So if we go to order item um, and looked at the, uh, kind of the collection here, we can see that we have the product ID of what was bought. We can see the total that the customer bought it for, how many quantities did they buy it, when was the order date, was there a discount applied, and then we can have the we have the customer ID, we have the promo ID, and then we have the order ID. So these are all the transactions that actually went through. So we want to see all those transactions and whether or not there was um, a kind of if there was a, a discount applied or stuff, which means that there was there was a promo uh, promo that was used. So we want to join. Basically, what we want to join is we want to join um, from our transactional like or all the purchases were made on um, on um, on the customer ID. So if you notice here. On customer on the customer table, we have a customer IDs right here. So you can join on if you want to see whether all the promo codes are being used or whether or not there was a discount applied. You can join on um, on on the basically the customer ID. Um, so that will be the really key thing of what we do. Um, so from join, uh, so we're going to join order item switch on or on customer ID dot ID equals um, OI dot customer ID, and then we can have a, a clause in in there that says where um, where we can have the clause where we can if you want to select by a particular date you can do that and you can just join on on particular. Um, promo codes that were used. So if we go back to where all the purchases were made, you can see where the promo ID that was used over here. And so you can just, there are a couple of ways that you can do this. You can just check whether the discount was applied was yes, or you can just check on, if you wanted to do further analysis, you can just check on whether, um, 
the promo ID was used. In this case, we can just see whether um, a discount was applied. So let's see if we can do that really quickly. Where is that little, where's my little working space over here? Uh, where um, discounts applied. Oh, actually. Um, where OI dot discount applied equals, I think this is, yes. And now you can see um, all the information of all the customers, basically all uh, the new customers that um, kind of came in. Or actually that's not completely right because what you wanna do is you wanna be able to filter on particular date when they join. Cause some people, actually this assumes that everyone who used a discount code but not the new people that joined. Actually this is kind of wrong. So really what we want to do is we want to cast, we typically what we want to do is check the date and, and see the date that they joined and um, filter from there. So actually this is kind of wrong. Let me go back to the customer Twitch. Um, create a date, yeah. So we can work on, um, we can work on the date over here and when they joined. Um, and if they joined um, the same day that you were running your campaign and they use the promo code, those are your new customer um, acquisitions. Um, so that's kind of what we want to look at over here. So let's go ahead and update this query. So, okay. So what we want to do is we still want all this. This is still right. It's just the where clause we got to fix. So we want to do, um, we want to work with the date object. Um, Or we can actually work with the created date object here for, for our purposes here. In Rockset, you can map an event time to your created date um, at the time of ingestion. I, uh, I didn't do that today. Um, but if we have time next week, what I can do is I can re-ingest um, the Kinesis stream and show you how you can do field mappings on it. So we'll just work with created date, but I'll put an asterisk on this that you can actually um, map event time to your created date. It's actually a lot faster when you do that because of how um, how how we work it out in the back end. But um, I'll put a little asterisk to that because you can do that. So we'll just work with created date today. So in Rocks, that you can work with date types. So if I go to date on Docs, it kind of shows you how to work with date. I guess date data sources, data types. Let's look at here. Let's look at SQL. Here we can type in dates. There we go, date constructor. Yeah, there's all those types. So there's date types um, and things like that. So I would recommend kind of going through this, but let's see if we wanna, we have what we have here. So we can do, um, we can cast this as a string. So let's say we have a date type. Um, we can just convert this. Um, let's see. Date as string. And you can kind of map it to um, whatever date that you started the campaign. So if we started the campaign 2021-25. Let's see if this comes out to an error really quick. Uh, okay, not no valid overload function date with argument string. Oh, I see what the, oh, I know what happened. Uh, let's go back to this part over here. Oh, created date is a string. Oh, I see what happened. And what was the error over here? 
Yeah, so let's go back to the docs really quick and let's look back at dates. Um, all right, let's go ahead and work this out really quick. Uh, let's see. I really should have converted it to invent time. And how am I getting the data again? Let's see. Was it customer? Actually, I'll tell you what. If you're not sure what the type of data you're getting, you can actually do um, select type of, and you can type in um, C dot created date, um, and then you can type in from uh, commons dot customer Twitch soon, and you can see that, and you can just write like, oh wait, actually go back. You can actually write limit one, and you can see the type of object that you're getting back. Oh. Undefined, I did not like that. Oh wait, wrong, 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 wrong collection. Customer Twitch, there we go. Okay, that should be better. Type string, okay. So we're getting the string type back. And if we run this, it's saying that no valid overload function for found date with argument string. So that's the problem. Um, so let's go back and see how we can work with string types and convert it. Oh, actually, if we go back here on customer Twitch, what does the string type look like? I'm gonna copy this really quickly. Um, and I'm gonna just put it as a comment here so I don't have to go back and forth on this. All right, so I'm gonna look at date type really quickly and see if I can do a conversion. Um, oh, we have a date time. So let's see what our object looks like again. Eight, so there's a time um, at the end. So I'm just working on conversion right now. Um, Uh, let's see, let's check date time really quickly. So we have current dates. We want to be able to cast, well, we have a string. We just really don't need the time here. Honestly, I just would like to just maybe, um, uh, Actually, this is already a string, but we don't really need the time here. So let's see if we can work on that. Maybe we can do parse date or parse date time. Let's see. Here are some examples of comparison and interval arithmetic operations on the date type. So we already have a string but we just want to be able to just get the date. We don't really care about the time. I'm kind of just going through we can go through format well we have a string that's the thing what is the date time Uh, current dates, we don't want that. Maybe parse, maybe parse date time. Is there a date parse? 
format date, parse date, parse date, extract date, date trunk, date diff, parse time. What does that look like? No, we don't want that. Um, date time constructor. Let's look at that. Parse date time. Let me copy this really quick. Let's see if we can get this working. So what I really want is I just want to be able to extract the date and I don't really need this time. Um, and then I can just compare it to like whatever the start date of the campaign is and then check the promo code. So it's really what I really need to do. Um, Let's, let's just try this really quickly. I'm going to copy this example here. And I'm going to just paste this here. And I don't really need this, but I would like to have the rest of the dates. I don't know if this is going to work or not. There we go. Oh, I did not like that. Timestamp error. Oh, great. I did not like that. I think our errors here are timestamp parse error. I wish um, I did not like that. Could be how it's formatted. Um, what am I running? Parse date time, year, month, and day. The other thing I can do is I can, if this is not going to work, I can do rejects. Oh gosh. This is going to be a whole nother thing. I can try to get rid of these numbers at the end and then just get the date and just get the kind of get the date back. Um, that's the other way to work on this. Let me see if I can write a, get a function to get this working. If it doesn't work, then we're going to have to do a little bit more work than I anticipated. Uh, let's see. I'm just trying to put this all in kind of one area right now. So I'm just looking right now. Cause we do have like a date time. Well, it's like a string. I wonder what the error was though. Uh, maybe not. Maybe this is not what I want. Uh, maybe this is what we want. Date time, select extract microseconds from date time. Oh, here we go. Day of week. Let's try this, select extract. Actually, maybe this is better. Oh, I gotta put a thing here, a little semicolon at the end. Oh, that's not what I liked. Seven, oh, day of week, oh, I see. What day of week, that's weird. Yo, that's what we want. Hold on. Let's redo this again. Okay, this is looking better. Um, let's go ahead and try this now. 
I'm going to copy this and paste it here. If it's not the right format, we'll probably get an error. Oh, yay! We got our date. All right, that's what we needed to do. Gosh, I love the extract. Cool. So what happened is that like when we run this on um, customer Twitch, we have there, and what I'm really interested in is just the date and I don't really need the time. So I just kind of just went through the docs and kind of figured out how to extract the date. So now if I run this, I can get rid of the time and I can just get the value back over here by doing the extraction. Okay. So obviously I should have done this field mappings at the time of kinesis injection. Totally slipped my mind. Um, typically that's what you want to do. Maybe we'll do that on our next session really quick, how to do field mappings and stuff with kinesis stream. But um, okay, so now that we have this working, uh, we can kind of take this and kind of work it into our query right now. So we're going to get rid of this. And I'm going to get rid of the select. So date from date time. And then instead of the date time here, I'm going to put, um, was it C dot create a date? And what's the problem here now? I don't, I can't see the error, but let's see what the problem is. Oh, it doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like that? Customer. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. Customer Twitch. This right. C dot create date. Why doesn't it like that? Hold on. Let's see what happened. So this was the original thing. Oh, maybe it does need a value. What? Not date. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't like that. Oh. All right, back to the drawing board. Let me go back in here again. Okay, that should work. So I kind of got figured how to get the date, but the query is not uh, not liking that part. I'll tell you what, we're getting close to time already. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to pick up from um, this query next week, and then we'll kind of continue to work out this query next week. Um, and and wrap up this query and then we have some more queries that we can write so maybe we'll do one more week of uh block sets and kinesis dynamo db and um, retool so we'll do one more less uh we'll do one last one next week if i end up not doing a twitch stream next week because of our engineering all hands i'll do it um the week after and we'll do a quick write-up we'll quick we'll quickly wrap this up and then we'll start a new project uh, right after that but i'll put this on hold um, we'll come back to this query because we're already past one o'clock and we'll just start working on it in our next stream. So, all right, I'll talk to you. Um, the nap, thanks for joining again. If you have any questions, definitely reach out. Um, um, but we'll, we'll wrap this up next week and I'll, um, I'll have a blog, whatever I do on these Twitch streams, there'll be a blog out. So, and then I always repost this on YouTube as well. So. I'll put a pause on this now and then we'll circle back and if it's not next week, two weeks from now. All right. So I'll catch you later. Thanks for joining. And um, yeah.